I'm a journalist and uh, despite the events of the past few weeks, I love my job and I'm proud to say I'm a journalist. So, I was, uh, when uh, Vasanti first spoke to me about the series of lectures, she didn't tell me whose lecture I would be presiding over. And uh, I was uh, very happy to learn that uh, it was Justice Sachar's lecture that I would be presiding over for many reasons. But for one reason more than anything else, he refused a Padma award. So he's a man very close to my heart. But, uh, I, I really do not think uh, people in public life uh, need to be recognized by the government. It just leads to too many instances of conflict of interest. Um, Dr. Rao basically stole much of what I had to say on Dr. Sata. But uh, I still think so what the judiciary is doing, not only the persons understand that the judiciary should really decide the civil and criminal cases and no other business outside this is right. But we are governed by a constitution. And the hopes and aspirations which inspire the freedom of struggle are the foundations on which the constitution of India is built. Now one of the basic problems facing any democratic nation relates to the division of power between the three principal instrumentalities representing the sovereignty of state, that's the legislature, executive and judicial. Now this is not a new riddle. Long time back, I mean, the famous, uh, we always quote this, Baron de Montesco of France said this, when the legislative and executive powers are united in the same person or body, there can be no liberty because apprehension may arise lest the same monarch or senate should enact tyrannical laws to enforce them in a tyrannical manner. But the power of judging, joined with the legislature, the life and liberty of the subject would be exposed to arbitrary control, for judge would then be the legislature. But if joined to the executive power, the judge might behave with all the violence of an oppressor. Mandosko saw this predicament and himself added that there can be no liberty if the power of judging be not separate from the legislature and the executive. So when our founding fathers and mothers were engaged in framing the constitution, their various basic presidents to work on with necessary flexibility to suit our special conditions in the country. Uh, let me stop to say, I will be the typical phrase of fathers and mothers, who is not going on only with his fathers. Uh, I have used it deliberately. Uh, in our jurisprudence, it's always said the fathers, founding fathers of the Constitution. This is a handover from the 1776 American US Constitution, which was framed. And evidently in 1776, when the Constitution was framed in USA, there were no women members in the Constitutional Assembly. So all the American cases, and the rest, man. You know, there was a law, that, there was a practice in the, the courts that uh, a no lady in foreign service would be the ambassador. And again, the Supreme Court had to pass this uh, direction, nullifying it. All these things, these, but for the Supreme Court, we would have still remained in their contribution to that. Obviously, one just question, what are the contributions of the parliament to leave it to them? The government appointed the Bucharia Commission. You know, the parliament enjoys privileges. In our constitution it is said that privileges will be those which were enjoyed by the House of Commons. Our constitution was framed in uh, 1950. And it said that unless it is amended. Now in 1950 there were various kinds of uh, parliamentary privileges even in the House of Commons. In all this period those privileges have been deleted. They are no longer there. But we who fought for freedom from the British Empire continue to have those privileges of 1950 which the House of Commons itself thought are disgraceful and has deleted. Venkat Chalya Commission, a very high-powered commission, 
our ex chief justice along with others suggested that parliament should frame what its privileges are in spite of like in 15 20 years the parliament has not chosen to do so and the reason is very obvious the reason is that because they have not uh, statutorily codified their privilege the courts can't intervene they say it's a parliamentary privilege given by the constitution the supreme court can't intervene at this stage but if they were to codify it then it will be a law and once a law is passed by the parliament then the supreme court can look into it and find out whether it is reasonable or not and it is because of this that you read in many cases where reserve seats is done by a individual citizen and some member of the legislature walks in with his and Jorge and do he has a ticket so the amount the railway man the railway officer cannot help the poor man because there is an mp or mla on the other side and all this for the privileges which are being enjoyed by them and if the house of commons man was to come here he would say good lord i thought i had left queen victoria behind but here i can find queen victoria and her dictates continuing even here so when you have such a situation and if you don't have the some other authority to keep a check on it this is what is bound to happen look at the police reports you know our renowned uh, civil servant uh, mr dharmvira the cabinet secretary i think 30 years back probably 20 30 years back had uh, he was appointed and headed a police reforms committee he passed he gave a very good report which all of us recognize as the first class report parliament for parliament scheme newspapers wrote about it none of these reforms were tucked up because basic reform was that the executive should not have any control over the police transfers and others because all of you probably know more than i then many of the state governments are such impervious to public criticism that when the chief minister i do of this when a chief minister took up in one of the states efficient and because uh, no one says that judges come from a different uh, planet they come from the same stock they have the same weakness they are not a different people they, they come from the same stock they suffer from the same weaknesses only power is given to them and therefore if all these things happen this applies of course it touches the public more it touches the public more because a daily public is affected more by the judges actions but what is at the back of it while we legitimate to criticize the judiciary is it's also it will be fair also to see the limitation under which it suffers and then to compare that if it more not to say that it does mess i take the pleasure of uh, Welcoming you all. I am very happy to see many old friends here, but many people who have uh, telephoned to us and inquired about the program said they are coming, are yet to be here. Maybe the season change has uh, seems to have cut some people. But I am very happy to see that there are more people here this evening than the Sardar Patel Memorial Lecture. one of the most prestigious in the country for 50 and odd years going on every year has attracted with uh, virendra uh, with our law minister mr moyli there are more people today here uh, you can imagine what i am trying to say thank you for all for coming in i am very happy that our uh, chairperson uh, mr uh, sukumar is here well ahead and justice rajan sachar is already here and some people are still having a tea so i thought that to be so may in the meanwhile may i request uh, mr sukumar to come and take a chair and also and if the speaker likes then only things will go further so what is what is this the motive of it why this deception where does the speaker come into the play you are constituting a committee of chief justice and judges of the high court and the supreme court to examine into the allegations as a matter of fact one should have thought that if the committee constituted of chief justice and judges find the person guilty that should automatically serve as a disqualification without any further charge 
I would even suggest, it, just as you have said, that if a committee of three judges find a complaint against a judge to be true, he can ask him to resign without going to the impeachment proceedings. So similarly, why are you not permitting this? That it is a three judges committee finds a complaint against a minister or a legislator to be true, then that finding will result in his disqualification. And you are making it subject to the speaker, uh, taking permission from the speaker. I don't think any self-respecting uh, judge would, uh, would agree even to serve on the committee if he is to find that his recommendation will be subject to the speaker okaying it or not agreeing to it. He will not be worth his salt to be done accept uh, such a post. And that is why you again will have a, a reason where, where, where they will not be able to uh, think. <clears throat> there is another thing, this recent thing, uh, you know, tele uh, adjournments of the parliament. You get up, you shout and uh, you walk out. Now, I am frankly not going into the merits of it whether the opposition is right or the government is right in going out. But I suggested even years back, and I think when Mr. Chatterjee was there, he was asking for certain suggestions, and we had given certain suggestions, and one of the suggestions was that whenever the House is disrupted, irrespective of the fault, whose fault it is, on that day, the allowance should not be given to the person's concern. This was on the principle which the Supreme Court had said, applying it to the poor workman. No work, no pay. I mean, if you don't work, if you go on a strike, and the strike is not justified, you won't be able to lie in the right to livelihood, the right to environment. And therefore, and for example, this environment, etc., as you know about, not by the legislature <coughs> now, but by the initiative which is taken by the courts. And by bringing it under right to right. All these uh, legislation have been brought by the initiative of the courts. And courts, of course, are no, uh, no demigod. <laughs> they, are, they are as human as others subject to the state. So, whatever important uh, contribution they have made to the introduction of this right to privacy, environment, cleanliness, life, right to education, these are all. Uh, contribution and will be judicially has played a fairly effective part. Okay. The second question from the lady here uh, had to do with the courts of the region. I think that matter is still under the control of the uh, Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is the one which has initiated that right to food and it was a very, uh, I think, very innocuous suggestion that if the food is being wasted, why don't you distribute it? Because I mean, it can be no answer to say that you can't give it free. Because if, 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 it, if it is eaten away, it doesn't even serve that purpose. So I don't think it, there is, I mean, there was an unfortunate reaction from the executive that they are laying on the policy. It was a very humane and very human uh, reminder of uh, the waste and the ants eating up the food. Rule model of India, justice. Rajinder Sachar. Hailing from an eminent family of nationalist, humanist, and rationalist, Justice Rajinder Sachar, <coughs> you have set high standards of justice, showing firm faith in human values. You have upheld social justice concern in the country. Your endeavor for upliftment of poor, minorities, and upholding of civil liberties and human rights are commendable. The national talk this evening at Nehru Memorial Museum and Library Auditorium as part of CMS Analyzing and Envisioning India is yet another example for your deep commitment and concern for democratic values.
thank you. I think uh, that, that last final thing that we always give and leave behind.